Hi friends, Steve here at Forest Lawn in the Hollywood Hills. I'm here at the gravesite of actress Virginia Dale. You might remember that she played the character Lila Dixon in the Christmas classic Holiday Inn. And she's just one of the cast members who's laid to rest here in the Los Angeles area. For all of you fans of the movie, I'm going to see how many of the other cast members I can find today and visit as well. Dale died from emphysema in nearby Burbank, California on October 3rd, 1994 at the age of 77. She's laid to rest here in the Vale of Peace section just down the hill from the Courts of Remembrance outdoor mausoleum and her Find a Grave memorial page does have a GPS to make it a little bit easier to find. In addition to Holiday Inn, she appeared in a couple of dozen movies during her career and also appeared in popular TV shows such as The Adventures of Kit Carson, Highway Patrol, and The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp. Marjorie Reynolds, who played Linda Mason, was cremated and has no final resting place to visit at this time. She died from congestive heart failure in Manhattan Beach, California on February 1st, 1997 at the age of 79. During her career, she appeared in more than 100 movies and TV shows, and many of you, I'm sure, will remember her for her role as Peg Riley in the popular 1950s TV show, The Life of Riley. A couple of years ago, I visited the gravesite of dancer and actor Fred Astaire, and for whatever reason, I never shared that with you on this channel. So with the holidays and Christmas coming up, I got to thinking about who I wanted to visit this year for my Christmas video. And then I remembered he was one of the stars of Holiday Inn. So I'm going to share my visit to his gravesite with you at the end of this video. But first I'm going to head over to Evergreen Cemetery in East Los Angeles, which is about 13 miles from this cemetery. This is where actress Louise Beavers is laid to rest. And you may remember that she played Mamie in the film. She's buried with her mother in Section A, Lot 2424. And to find her grave site, you enter through the front gates here. And Section A is one of the first sections on the left-hand side. And as you can see, this is the office here on the left-hand side as well. There's no GPS, but her Find a Grave Memorial page says that Louise Beavers is buried here in this section. And I was here a year or two ago visiting another grave site. And I wish I had known that she was here at the time because I was probably just a few feet away. But that does happen to me, you know, as you know, quite often. Now, the picture on her Find a Grave Memorial page doesn't have her name on the grave. It just has her mother's name and says that she's interred here with her mom. Now, I don't know if she was cremated and her ashes were interred here or if there's a double burial plot here. And at first I'm just gonna look because the picture is one of these reddish brown headstones and I think I'll recognize it. I'm hoping that maybe her name has been added since that picture was taken, but I guess we'll soon find out. I just looked again on my Find a Grave app and there is a GPS. And it looks like I'm right here in the right section. It's one like that. It would be nice if they had both pictures of them on the headstone. It's hard to tell from the uh, photo exactly how close it is to the wall here. I'm here at the corner of Evergreen and Cesar Chavez Avenue. You can see Evergreen right across the street. And I drove in on this street right here. And the entrance to the cemetery is right down there behind that hedge. This is a really cool older section with some really nice headstones. I found Louise Beaver's mother's headstone right here. As you can see, it's black. And all of, almost all of the stones in this section are black. So that's why I didn't think it was here, because the picture that the Find a Grave person put on, which does have the name and it looks just like this, it was a brown stone. And a pretty light reddish brown stone, like some of the others that you see here. So I don't know if maybe over a year, over the years, the brownstone turns to black. I mean, it does not look like that could have ever been sort of a reddish, lightish red stone. So maybe they replaced the stone at some point with a black stone. I don't know, but that did make it uh, pretty difficult to find. I this is where the GPS said it was. So finally, I thought, well, let me just. I searched all through the section here, and I came back up. You know, I was looking for a brown stone, but I came back up and I thought, well, let me see. Maybe they changed the stone. Maybe it's a flat stone. Maybe Louise Beaver's name is now on the stone, so they changed it for that reason. But it looks like it probably is a new stone, but her name still isn't on it. And there's a space there for her name. 
So I hope that her family, if she still has family living, I hope they'll add her name to her shared headstone. I mean, after all, she was one of the most famous, most well-known African-American actresses of all time. I mean, she was like one of the top, maybe top 10, maybe top five African-American actresses, had two very popular TV shows, was in, I think, about 150 movies. I don't know, maybe she didn't really care if her name was remembered in the graveyard. I mean, she certainly remembered on the screen. Louise Beavers died in Hollywood on October 26, 1962, at the age of 60. And in 1976, she was inducted into the Black Filmmakers Hall of Fame. It's unfortunate that age and the weather has made the headstone very difficult to read. In recent years, Holiday Inn has become a bit controversial due to its use of blackface during a stage performance within the movie. That scene is usually now edited out. Editing out scenes from historic movies has also become controversial. So just a heads up if you haven't seen the film already. The actor I was here a year or two ago to visit is laid to rest somewhere right in there, closer to the bottom of the section. And you might remember him as Rochester. Eddie Anderson, or Eddie Rochester Anderson from the Jack Benny Show. So it's kind of cool that they're both here in the same section, Section A. I haven't shared his gravesite with you yet. And I'm going to walk back to the car. If I see his gravesite, I'll film it and uh, show it to you. And look at that. I just spotted it. Just a few rows up the hill here. It looks like I lucked out today. So here's uh, Eddie Rochester Anderson's final resting place. And it's funny, I just happened to be walking by. I'm glad that uh, I remember that it was one of the taller ones. And it is the color that Louise Beaver's stone started out as. So she's up there. They're very close to each other. I wonder, I'm sure they must have known each other. They were two of the most popular African-American actors of their time. So they were probably friends. And actually, some of you film buffs may know if they appeared in movies together. I'm guessing they probably did. So that'd be fun to know if you want to share that in the comments section with us. Anderson had heart problems and died in Los Angeles on February 28th. 1977 at the age of 71. He was inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame in 2001. Just three miles southeast of here is the Home of Peace Memorial Park where the director Mark Sandrich is laid to rest. And some of you will probably recognize it from my last visit here as the final resting place of two of the three stooges, Shemp and Curly. To find Sandrich's grave site, you enter through the front gates here and make a right, and you'll see his prominent headstone right by the curb on the left-hand side in Section A. Well, I just pulled in the gate, and I noticed that on the right-hand side, there were two ways to go, to the left or the right. On the right, they were having a funeral pretty close to the front gate. So I went to the left, and then I stopped, and I looked at my Find a Grave app, only to discover that Mark Sandrich's grave site appears to be right where they're having the funeral. And Holiday Inn, as you know, or as many of you probably know, starred Bing Crosby and Fred Astaire. And Mark Sandrich really got his start directing Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers in some of their most popular films. He directed The Gay Divorcee, Top Hat, Follow the Fleet, Shall We Dance, Carefree, and I believe they were all in the 1930s. And then in 1945, he directed Fred Astaire in Holiday Inn. And that turned out to be what he's most remembered for, I think. Well, he's probably remembered for all of those, but Holiday Inn became a real Christmas classic. And again, it's kind of ironic. This is a Jewish cemetery. Mark Sandrich was Jewish and directed, you know, one of the most popular Christmas movies. The green tent that you see there, straight ahead and a little bit to the right, is where the funeral is taking place right now. And I'm speaking softly so I don't disturb them. The noise from the nearby freeway is probably drowning out anything I'm saying, but I just want to make sure. Just between the two large headstones right in front of me is the headstone of Mark Sandwich. And I'm using my telephoto lens to see how much of the headstone I can see from this distance. Unfortunately, it's just a little bit too far away and in the shadows, so I'm going to see if I can move a little bit closer without drawing in any attention to myself. The last thing I want to do is be disrespectful at someone's funeral. Unfortunately, this is as close as I'm going to be able to get today. I'm not going to be able to go around to the other side. I'm sure everyone at the service would turn around to see what I was filming. They just started the service, and I'm not going to be able to hang around for an hour or two until they're done. But at least you can see where he's buried. Sandridge died from a heart attack in Hollywood, California on May 4th, 1945, at the very young age of 44. 
His life and career were cut prematurely short, but he left a very long legacy. In addition to the classic films he left behind, his son Jay Sandrich followed in his father's footsteps and also became a director. Jay became a television director, and this year, 2020, he was inducted into the Television Hall of Fame. He's now 88 years old and during his long career has directed some of the most popular TV shows of all time. They include classics like I Love Lucy, The Andy Griffith Show, The Cosby Show, Get Smart, The Mary Tyler Moore Show, and many others. Approximately 40 miles northwest of here is Oakwood Memorial Park in the city of Chatsworth and this is where Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers are both laid to rest. And to be honest, this is one of the last places I would have expected to find them. A stairs grave site is located in Section G, Lot 84, Space 4. He died from pneumonia in Los Angeles on June 22, 1987, at the age of 88. A singer, dancer, and actor, he appeared in more than 50 movies and TV shows during his career, and he's considered to be one of the most influential dancers in film history. As you can see, he's laid to rest here with many family members in this informal family plot area. Do you have a favorite Fred Astaire movie? Last year I visited the gravesite of Bing Crosby along with the other cast members from the movie White Christmas. So instead of showing you his gravesite again today, I'll put a link down below in the description section to that video. The other main cast members from the movie were either cremated, were laid to rest out of the area, or their final resting places are unknown. And while Ginger Rogers didn't appear at Holiday Inn, her gravesite is just a very short distance away from Fred Astaire's gravesite that I thought you would want to see it anyway. Ginger Rogers' final resting place is located in Section E, Curb Marker 298, and like a stair, her Find a Grave Memorial page does have a GPS, making her gravesite a lot easier to find. She was also a singer, an actor, and a dancer, and in 1940 she won an Academy Award for her role in the film Kitty Foyle. She died from natural causes in Rancho Mirage, California on April 25, 1995, at the age of 83. She was cremated and her ashes are interred here with her mother. And this week I want to thank my newest Patreon supporters, Jessica Rolf, Tracy Bentley, and William Hobart Lee. Thank you so much, Jessica, Tracy, and William, for your generous donations to this channel. Your donations really do help make trips like this possible. I also really want to thank all of you who have subscribed to this channel. That also really helps a lot. So if you enjoyed today's video, I hope you'll join me in another one by clicking and watching this one here. Until next time, happy holidays and Merry Christmas, everyone.